Hey, what's going on guys? Nick Heron here with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show. And guys, today what I want to talk to you about is some players that can potentially replace Tony Romo for you on your fantasy squads this year. Now obviously Tony Romo, it does sound like, is going to miss significant time this year. He has been placed on the IR designated to return later this year for my Dallas Cowboys. But for fantasy owners, we're kind of screwed right now, aren't we? I mean, it's, it's a tough situation right now to lose your starting quarterback in fantasy, especially a guy that's been performing as well as Romo has. So let's take a look here at some guys who could potentially step in. And I don't know if they're going to replace Romo, but definitely give you some sort of numbers to help kind of cushion the blow, I guess, of losing your starting fantasy quarterback. So let's start off first at a guy who actually has pretty much been an elite fantasy quarterback so far this season, and that is Carson Palmer of the Arizona Cardinals. Now, Palmer is a guy who kind of was on the verge of being drafted in a lot of leagues. I actually did draft him in a couple leagues uh, as my fantasy starter to start the year. Drafted him and like a Sam Bradford or him and a Ryan Tannehill, that kind of a thing. So he is only available right now in 32% of leagues. So this is the lowest number of uh, availability of all these guys. But I'm going to give you five options here beside uh, with including Carson Palmer. So uh, again, we've got Carson Palmer here at number one. He's thrown seven touchdowns with only one interception so far this year. He's putting up huge numbers. Pretty much everybody's looking good in this Arizona offense in terms of the receiving corps. So John Brown, Larry Fitzgerald's looking amazing as well. So as long as that continues, I don't see any reason that Carson Palmer can't continue to be a borderline top 10 fantasy quarterback himself, which is kind of where Tony Romo was before he got injured as well. So I think Carson Palmer is kind of the ideal fit right now. If he's available in your league, I would go out there and grab Palmer, at least until, you know, inevitably he might get hurt as well. And then we're going to be talking about this again in a couple of weeks. But hopefully he can stay healthy. We'll see what happens. Happens, though. Let's move on to number two. We've got Tyrod Taylor, who's currently available in 82% of leagues. Now, Taylor is, is definitely somebody who's interesting because he's a lot more mobile than other fantasy quarterbacks are, especially guys who are kind of regularly available. You've got your Russell Wilson, who's owned in pretty much every league right now. Even Tannehill's pretty close to owned in, in just about every league right now. Uh, and these guys are kind of the considered to be more mobile quarterbacks that are available currently. But then, uh, you know, and then obviously Cam Newton as well. But there's guys like Tyrod Tyrod Taylor as well that come around that can give you some quality fantasy numbers themselves. Tyrod Taylor has already thrown for four passing touchdowns. He does have three interceptions, which is a little bit unfortunate, but he has rushed for 40 yards in each of the first two games. He also did rush for a touchdown this past week against the Patriots. So big numbers out of Tyrod Taylor are possible. I mean, this is a guy that could potentially put up big numbers, especially if they're down in games. A lot of teams are willing to allow the quarterback to take off and run for, you know, eight to 12 yards or so at a pop. And and, you know, if, if that happens to the Bills and they fall behind in some of these games against guys or against offenses that are a little bit better than theirs, in the third, fourth quarter, you could be seeing Tyrod Taylor throwing the ball quite a bit and even running for first downs and possibly, again, even some more rushing touchdowns. And that's a good way to produce some big solid fantasy numbers at least, if not big fantasy numbers. So I like Tyrod Taylor as a possible replacement for Tony Romo. Again, he's available in 82% of leagues, which is most leagues at this point. So go out there and snag him up if you can. Next, we've got Andy Dalton of the Cincinnati Bengals. And I know a lot of you are probably laughing at this one, right? Andy Dalton, obviously not a clutch quarterback, has not performed well in the playoffs throughout his career. But in the regular season, Andy Dalton does have some decent pedigree. He's had a couple of very good years. He's only two years removed from being a top five fantasy quarterback for the year. So again, this is a guy who could potentially give you some good numbers here in uh, in 2015. We've got AJ Green, obviously, who's looking very good. Tyler Eifert back from injury. Marvin Jones back from injury as well. He's got weapons to throw the ball to. Giovanni Bernard out of the backfield. Even Mohamed Sanu and Jeremy Hill can catch passes as well. There are a lot of targets here in Cincinnati to go around, and I think that Andy Dalton is going to benefit from that. He's already looked very good so far. Five touchdowns, no interceptions through his first two games, and I don't see any reason why. I mean, obviously, he's going to throw some picks eventually. But I don't see any reason why he can't continue to put up good quality fantasy numbers going forward. So again, Andy Dalton, 79% of leagues he's available in right now. If Tyrod Taylor and Carson Palmer aren't available, he's the guy that I'm looking at as the next guy on the list. Moving down here, the final two guys are kind of more speculative. Hopefully they turn out kind of things, and really you're kind of taking a, a, just a, a wild shot kind of, I guess, on these guys. But we've got Nick Foles here. 
Owned right now in only about 18% of leagues, so he is available at about the same percentage as Tyrod Taylor at about 82%, but I think Nick Foles doesn't quite represent the upside of Tyrod Taylor because he's not much of a runner. But he has actually looked pretty good. He ran, he threw for almost 300 yards against the Seahawks, and he also threw for a touchdown. Uh, he does, did also have 150 yards this past week and a touchdown, which isn't spectacular, obviously, against Washington. But he's thrown for touchdowns in both games. Next game that he has right now is up against Pittsburgh. And if you need somebody for this week, and a lot of guys are not available, I think that you could really look at Nick Foles as a potential guy to replace Tony Romo at least for one week here against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's defense looks horrible right now, quite frankly, and their offense is going to be very, very good. They've got Le'Veon Bell coming back. They're, uh, you know, obviously Antonio Brown's putting up good numbers. Heath Miller's putting up good numbers. They're running the ball very effectively as a team. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens here in this game, St. Louis against Pittsburgh, because if St. Louis does fall behind, they might have to pass the ball quite a bit more than they did this past week when they really were relying a lot on the running game. So I expect a lot of passing attempts this week from Nick Foles and I think he's a really sneaky player to potentially throw for 300 yards and multiple touchdowns this week. So keep an eye on him. If he's available and you've, you've kind of lost out on the other top guys, definitely go out there and snag him up this week at least, see what happens. And then last on the list, guys, we have Derek Carr of the Oakland Raiders. He's available right now in 89% of leagues, so that gives you the widest number of availability, I guess. Uh, and I would definitely go out there and grab him if he's available right now uh, and you're in a desperate situation because... Look, I understand Derek Carr's in a tough situation in Oakland. They're going to have those games where they get absolutely blown out, as we've already seen. They've had some struggles on offense. But this past week, they actually looked very, very good on offense. I mean, they put up a lot of points against a very good Baltimore Ravens defense. And a lot of that came from the fact that Derek Carr was throwing the ball very effectively. He was hitting Amari Cooper. He was hitting Michael Crabtree. It just is going to need one. They really just need one more guy to step up. And I really think then that they are going to have a really high-powered passing game at least, if not a running game to go along along with it as well. So if Latavius Murray looks good and uh, you know they're getting a good threat of the run, Derek Carr's got a possibility to put up decent numbers on a week-to-week -week basis as well. He threw for 351 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception against Baltimore. So I mean, it doesn't get much tougher than the Baltimore defense. Hopefully we can see Derek Carr continue to progress this year and maybe become a decent quality QB2 in your standard scoring leagues and even a low-end QB1 if you're in a tough situation, like I said, if you lose Tony Romo or somebody like that. So there you have it, guys. That is the list of the guys that I'm recommending you go out there and snag up if they're available in your fantasy leagues right now to replace Tony Romo. Hopefully that helped you out. If it did, do me a favor, hit the like button, and of course, subscribe to this channel if you are new. Thank you guys for all the support. I really do appreciate it, and I'll talk to you guys next time here on the Fantasy Football Swagger Show.